morning and welcome to St. Ignatius Parish in San Francisco. Before we enter into liturgy together, we'll continue learning and practicing our new mass setting, the Mass of St. Anne. We're learning two similar pieces, reviewing them again today. We practiced them last week and next week we'll sing them in the context of liturgy. So if you have not done so already, I invite you to download our worship aid and you can find these parts on beginning on page 12. And as we practiced last week, I pointed out that both of these pieces are very similar, so they're easy to catch on to. And the Kyrie is actually an echo. So because I'm singing by myself, I'll sing both parts, but I'll gesture to indicate when the assembly can enter. So beginning on page 12, here is the Kyrie from the Mass of St. Anne. Continue to the Lamb of God, which you'll hear is very similar to what we just sang in the Kyrie. <laughs>
just joining us, welcome to St. Ignatius Parish in San Francisco. I invite you to first refresh your screen on your device. Make sure that you can see the chat box. You can refresh by using the small circle that's found in the upper left-hand corner of your browser or by pressing control R. So as we begin today, I also would like to point out that the order of worship can be downloaded through the chat box which is the place where you'll find lots of vital information. And I wanted to let you know that our order of worship is actually formatted for your iPhone or for your tablet. So for those of you who have smartphones or who have iPhones, uh, an easy, convenient way to follow along with the text is to open that document up actually on your phone, and then you can follow along easily. And so as we enter into worship, I invite you to rise and join in singing wherever you are, Lift High the Cross, which you'll find on page one of the order of worship. Good morning. Welcome to all of you. It's very good to be able to pray with you and just to be present. Uh, you know, during this virus, it's only a few Sunday Masses that I get a chance to really celebrate. I pray always for you as I do my own Mass, but it's so good to be with you this morning. And uh, I picked up a guide, but unfortunately I can't wear my glasses as I present them. I can't read a word. So anyway, uh, it's very nice to have it. You know, if we listen to the readings today, which out of Jeremiah and Matthew, we have two people who are talking about their encounter with God and what it means. Jeremiah talks about the horrible treatment that he gets as he speaks to the people of Israel. Jesus has to respond to Peter. And say, you've got to think the way God thinks, not the way human beings do. So they talk about their real commitment to God. And it's a pilgrimage that they're embarking on that isn't always easy. We too are called by God. And we begin a pilgrimage. And we turn to the Lord. We ask that through his love, his mercy and forgiveness, we have the freedom to be truly a people of love. You know, God has empowered us. That's the great story of the multiplication of loaves. In the hands of the Lord, there were no limitations. So we realize our own limitations. But Jesus says, by the power of my spirit, I am with you and I have called you. And so as we begin our prayer, 
once again we turn to Jesus. We ask that through the gift of that spirit that we can be healed and reconciled, that we can truly find the call of God in our life. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you healed the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. So now let us join together as in song we give praise and glory to God. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, that by deepening our sense of reverence, we may, nature, we may mature in us what is good, and by a watchful care keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day, I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. 
the word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I gaze toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory, for your kindness is a greater good than mine. My lips shall the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, 
holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Whoever wishes to save their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Or what can one give in exchange for their life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. My sisters, my brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jeremiah is one of my favorite prophets because during his writings, there are sections that they refer to as the autobiography, where he really gets in touch with his feelings. He's a man called by God, who loves God, but also realizes what that journey of following the Lord involves. It really involves some contradictions that really hurt to the core for Jeremiah. He's a man who loves Jerusalem. He loves the temple. That's the place where human beings meet God on earth. Yet his great mission is to tell the people the city will be destroyed. The temple will be no more. And because of this preaching, it's considered to be a traitor. He's thrown into a cistern and left for dead. And God has called him to a mission of celibacy. And like some of the other prophets, 
There's no special person in his life that he can go home to that really loves him for who he is. And so he talks about the loneliness, the pain. But eventually he always says yes to God. In the Gospel of Matthew, we have Jesus talking about the fact he knows that hatred is on the increase, that ultimately he will be arrested and killed. That's his journey. That's part of his yes to God. It's not something that he specially wants. He's not a masochist. Just look at that scene in the Garden of Gethsemane when the blood came out through sweat and Jesus said, Father, let this cup pass by me, but not my will, but your will be done. Ultimately, that saying yes to God, that commitment, that commitment to a journey which God leads us through life. And as Christians in baptism, People make a commitment to God, a commitment that we sometimes have to renew almost every day. But that's our call. That's our call to follow the Lord in whatever it demands. You know, Paul in his writing said, you know, do whatever is good and pleasing to the Lord. So we have a challenge. We have a challenge. What is our call by the Lord? You know, so often it's not to be a prophet, a prophet that calls the people back to right relationship with the Lord. It's not to face a cross, but it's ultimately to realize our commitment is to a living community. Because that's where we find God and where everyone is going to find God. And that's our commitment. And so often, it's not to take up a cross, but it's to ask the Lord, what are we invited to do? And so often, it's to share with that community. It's to be a member of that community and to love that community. So sometimes it can be expressed that what we can dedicate to the community is our time, our talents, and our treasure. And that's what we need. You know, for instance, as we go through this COVID epidemic, as individuals, we wonder, what can I do? But so often, we realize that through a community, we read today out of Matthew's gospel. Matthew always talks about the fact it's love of God and love of our neighbor. And so we're called to love our neighbor. And so often there is a lot of things we cannot do. But through institutions that we belong to, we can really help and reach out and service people. Last week, Raymond talked about his work in the prison. What was going on as a chaplain? There's so much work, for instance, that our church in San Francisco does. Uh, I'm very well aware of my work with the matrimonial group as we work on marriage problems to try to get people to be free. And so, today we're asked to join in the AAA, the Archdiocesan Annual Appeal, and to support the church as it really tries to serve one another. That's our call, to love God and one another. And so we're called to do it through an institution that we all belong to. And that's our yes to God. So right now I'd like to ask uh, Deacon Eddie and his wonderful wife, Diane, two real pillars of the community that uh, are so important to us. They want to share a little bit about the Archdiocesan Annual Appeal. Please come. Good morning. Thank you, Father Paul, for the introduction. 
back in 2009, Eddie and I started the five-year process of formation for the permanent diaconate. The Archdiocese provided us a curriculum designed to prepare deacon candidates and their wives for a lifetime of ministry. Instruction during those years included a program of scripture study, classes in, on canon law, the sacramental rites, and moral theology. Additionally, deacon candidates and their wives received instruction on grief counseling, hospital and prison ministries, as well as caring for our homeless and immigrant brethren and sisters. Each year, we had the opportunity to participate in an annual retreat at Vallambrosa in Menlo Park. And every year since ordination, we've had an annual retreat with all of the ordained to continue our formation. All of this was afforded to us by the Archdiocese and created for Eddie and I a foundation of which our future ministries would be based. After ordination in 2014, my brother deacons and I were placed in various parishes throughout the archdiocese. I'm grateful to have been welcomed here at St. Ignatius to serve our community with Father Greg and Father Paul and Father John. I also have the privilege to work with Mary Romo as we prepare adults for our RCIA program to receive the sacraments and enter fully into the Catholic Church. I also get to work with couples during their marriage preparation. And I also have the privilege to preside at weddings, baptisms, and funerals. My brother deacons have been called to many other ministries. Some go to prisons and juvenile detention centers to counsel the inmates. Some work with the missionaries of charity and care for the homeless at food kitchens and food pantries. Some work in local hospitals and care for the sick and visiting with rest homes. Some work with hospice care agencies to help comfort the dying. With the declining number of men turning towards the priesthood, some deacons have had to step in to help run parishes. Diaconal ministries take several forms as we fulfill our calling to serve. This year, the Archdiocese has ordained nine deacons, and there are 11 more currently in formation. There is also a new class being formed of 10 candidates. Deacons are comprised of both married and single men who work for a living to support themselves and their families, in addition to a ministry which is oftentimes voluntary. In this morning's gospel, we hear Jesus tell the disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Anyone being called to ministry has experienced some degree of sacrifice. To follow where Christ leads us, we know that giving of ourselves is always rewarded with us encountering a oneness with Christ. The diaconate is meant to create a bridge to Christ. As deacons, we ask God to illuminate our path so that we may be the hands of Jesus to those who need help. To be the voice of Jesus for those who seek his word. And to be the shoulders of Christ for those whose burden at times seems too much to bear. Good morning, everyone. For those who don't know me, my name is Greg Bonfilio. I'm the pastor here at St. Ignatius Parish. As I was sitting in the pew listening to Father Paul and to Deacon Eddie and to his wife, Diane, and to the music, I just uh, was struck again how blessed I am to work with such wonderful people. Uh, Father Paul talked about saying yes to Jesus. Uh, is, uh, in, in saying yes to Jesus, we make a commitment to a living community. I'm here this morning to say thank you to all of you who made that commitment uh, to the living community last week uh, and responded so generously to 
my appeal to participate in the Archdiocesan Annual Appeal. 140 of you uh, did participate last week uh, for a total of a uh, little, o- uh, little over $29,000, which is huge. That brings our total up to $102,000. It wasn't just our parishioners. It was uh, me- uh, many of you from around the country who participated and supported us uh, in that, including a few of my dear friends from Sacramento. I'm deeply grateful uh, to all of you for that, uh, and I thank you on behalf of St. Ignatius Parish, but I especially thank you on behalf of those people whose uh, lives will be changed because of your generosity. As many of you know, one of my most favorite prayers about discipleship with Jesus comes from Teresa of Jesus, Teresa of Avila, St. Teresa. Christ, she says, Christ has no body now on earth but yours, no hands but yours, no feet but yours. It is your eyes through which Christ's compassion looks out to the world, your feet on which Christ goes about the world doing good, your hands with which he blesses humanity, your voice with which his forgiveness is spoken, and your heart with which he now loves. The Archdiocesan appeal enables our feet to walk into jails and hospitals to visit the imprisoned and the sick. The Archdiocesan Annual Appeal allows our hands to bless low-income students with a Catholic school education. And it, and it lends our voices to those people who minister to those who speak a language other than our own. So I'm asking you again today to, to uh, support us, to give the opportunity to those of you who have yet to uh, make a contribution. Our total is 197. We have about $95,000 to go. Um, We do have till December 30th, but I'd like to get this behind us so that we can move on. Um, So I'm inviting all of you again to support registered parishioners, uh, those of you who have joined us either recently or since we went into shelter in place. Um, On your screen, in the chat box, there is a link that will take you directly to the Archdiocesan webpage. If you don't have the chat box open, Viviana has put in a link below the, the, uh, the picture, so you can click on that and that will also take you to the Archdiocesan page. So choose there when you get there, one-time gift or pledge. If you choose pledge, you have to choose one, two, three, four, or five months. Then you choose an amount that you uh, wish to make, uh, a donation you wish to make. And then be sure to click the parish designation. Just click that link, you get a drop down menu and scroll down to St. Ignatius Parish. And then the rest is uh, your billing address and your method of payment, which you can fill in. So again, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart uh, for your generosity last week, before and this week as well. And for all of the people that you will serve that Eddie and Diane spoke so beautifully about and that Paul Uh, encouraged us to in his homily. Uh, So while you're uh, doing that, Maggie will sing that beautiful song that she sang last week about uh, being Christians in our world, followers of Jesus. Thank you very much. God bless you.
generosity, you know, by enabling the community to carry out what it does, we can do so much more than one individual could do. So please stand. And using the Apostles' Creed, let us make our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our lives have taught us that ours is a God of forgiveness and understanding. With a great sense of thirst, we gather these needs and place them in your hands, Lord. For the church, that it align itself with the poor, the vulnerable, and suffering, wherever they may be. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. hear our prayer. For women who serve parish communities, that their communities honor their work, their wisdom, and cause. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all citizens of the United States, that as we prepare for the upcoming election, we continually practice earnest listening and seek policy which promotes human flourishing in all its diverse manifestations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For hearts sensitive and attuned to the rhythms of earth, that the human family study ways to live in relationship with God's creation and resist the temptation toward overconsumption. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Jacob Blake, for his children, and for his family, that they be consoled, and that pastors, teachers, and government officials make safe spaces for protest, dialogue, and ultimately change. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the intentions written in the book at the Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe, and for all of our beloved faithful departed, especially Patrick Christopher O'Neill, Sue Bennett, Sister Elaine Roulette, and those who continue to perish alone each day from COVID-19. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. Ignatius Parish, that as we are knit together by the Holy Spirit, each of us might be strengthened to pick up our crosses and lead lives of true discipleship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I'd also like to pray for all those whose lives are being impacted by the fires, not only here in California, but in places like Colorado. I'm going to pray for the firefighters, the responders, the families, for those that have lost homes and members of their family. Let us reach out to them and support them we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Then I want to pray for all the people that have really suffered under that hurricane, Laura, that struck parts of Texas and Louisiana. Homes were destroyed, people are without power. So I want to reach out to them just in spirit that there can be a speedy renewal of their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh God, Help us to see how you answer our needs and in response to live with fidelity, live the fidelity of Jeremiah, the zeal of Paul, 
and the faith of Peter. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the Lord. As you know, this is the point in our liturgy when we usually pass the basket. We have very deep gratitude for those of you who have been so faithful with your weekly envelopes and online donations. Your generosity sustains parish ministry in the many ways we're able to stay connected digitally. I encourage those who are now part of our virtual faith community to support your local parish. And if you find meaning in our digital ministries, to make a donation to support us so that all is well. Once again, thank you so much. As our gifts are gathered and our table prepared, please join together in singing Behold Before Our Wondering Eyes, which can be found on page seven of your order of worship. my priest and my brother that this hour sacrifice may be acceptable to God our almighty father may the Lord accept this sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God to our good and good of all by faith and hope may this sac sacred offering O Lord confer in us always the blessing of salvation that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though we are divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more by your spirit, 
you move our hearts, that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. You almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake, you hand it over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. Who went about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper. He took bread into his hand, in giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. So now in song, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Celebrating, therefore, this memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed in us, this sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Loving Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May you make us, who are your church, a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all peoples. And may you keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, all the bishops, and the entire people your Son has gained for you. 
just as you have gathered us here now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, your spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints with our sisters and brothers of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus the Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. So let us stand, and as the community together, let us pray to the Father in the beautiful words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles and your friends, and you say to us, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Lord, do not look upon our own individual sins and failings, but rather look upon the faith, the love, and care of your entire church, and graciously grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. And so may the peace of the Lord be with you all. So I will pause while we have a chance to share that peace and love of the Lord. My sisters, my brothers, this is truly Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who's taken away the sin of the world. How happy are we who have been called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus keep us in God's love now and forever. Amen.
communion song can be found on page 10 of your order of worship on Let's a Grain of Wheat. Let us say our prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, we believe that what you're present in the most blessed sacrament. We love you above all things, and we desire to receive you into our souls. Since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into our hearts. We embrace you as if you were already there and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen.
let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, O Lord, that bring the food of charity, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. number of announcements. First of all, thank you. Thank you to our lectors, our musicians, dreamers, alkalites, uh, Eddie and Diane for your words. Uh, thank you very much. That we need all of you for our ministry, so thank you very much. You can still send the photo collage in the pews that comprises our virtual parish. Please send them to info at St. Ignatius SF Org. If you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is a platform for weekend liturgies, daily mass, the virtual virtuoso series, and other resources for our faith and spirituality. And if all you need is a quiet place to pray, the live stream is on 24-7. Registration of Children's Faith Formation now called Pilgrims, is open. This is a year of digital religious education and sacramental preparation. Email Teresa Carino with any questions or push the blue button in the upper right-hand corner of homepage. This Thursday's Virtual Virtuoso Concert will feature works for solo cello, a program entitled Celebration and Meditation featuring cellist Jonah Kim. Tune in onto the live stream on our YouTube channel at 7.30 p.m. this Thursday. If you or anyone you know is interested in being baptized in the Catholic faith, or if you've already been baptized and wish to receive the sacraments of Eucharist and Confirmation, please contact Mary Romo or Deacon Eddie Gutierrez about our RCA program here at St. Ignatius. The contact information is our chat box, e-newsletter, and the parish website. It will start on Sunday, September 13th by Zoom after the Sunday 10 a.m. live stream mass. While our church is closed, we will light virtual votive candles on your behalf for your loved ones and prayer intentions. Leave your donation in the online candle offering box. Link is in the chat box and on the parish website. Join us after Mass today at our virtual hospitality on Zoom. It will feature Amy Stewart and Maria Bowden sharing about our ministry, Los Vecinos, and what exactly it means to be a sister parish. To join, Click on the link in the YouTube chat box to take you straight to the Zoom hospitality room. Link from the same page on the website where you find your Sunday order of worship. If necessary, password is Ignatius, all caps. In the coming weeks, rolling out a number of virtual ministries, info links, etc., will come via an e-newsletter. We would love to be in touch with you so sign up by clicking link in chat box or blue button in upper left corner of website. If you're not getting the newsletter, please check the spam folder in your email account. Our emails come from St. Ignatius Parish. For the AAA, the annual Archdiocesan Appeal, if you didn't get a chance, please go to our website, series of drop-down menus, Ministry Giving. When halfway down that is the list, Archdiocesan Annual Appeal. Donate Now button, link is also in the chat box. Can also, you can also make your Sunday offering that way. For any pastoral needs, please contact us. Pastoral counseling, spiritual direction, sacramental preparation, and other needs. 
And so, happy birthday to Amelia Gallegos, Bailey Ferrand, Grace Grassi, Joseph Shin, Vincent Virgil, Colin Rinkses, Steve McPhee. And I want a special anniversary to Mark and Liz Farrell, seventh anniversary. So God bless all of them and God bless you. So have a wonderful week and God bless you and thank you for my chance of being able to come into your homes and celebrate. And so, may the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let's go forth in peace and joy to love God and one another. Thanks be to God. As we go forth from this time and space, I invite you to join together in singing Lead Me, Guide Me, which you'll find on page 11 of your order of worship. Yeah.